This is a 2018 BMW M760i, which is the new name for the flagship model in the BMW 7 Series luxury sedan range. The sticker price on this car is a little bit over $180,000, which makes this the most expensive BMW of all time. Naturally, it's full of a lot of cool features and interesting quirks, and today I'm going to show them to you. First, a little overview. Now, BMW has never made an M7 with the full M treatment from their high performance division like the M3 and the M5. I guess they figure it's a little too large and luxurious to become an M car, but in recent years, they have lent the M badge to some other models, the M240 and the M550, for example, to create sort of half M cars. And that's exactly what they've done here with the M760. I've borrowed this M760 from BMW of Devon here in the Philadelphia suburbs, the number one BMW dealership in Pennsylvania. They have a large inventory of new BMWs, which includes, well, this car. And yes, it has a $180,000 sticker price, or $181,075 to be exact. Like old top-end 7 Series models, this car still has a V12. It's a 6.6 liter twin-turbo V12 with 600 one horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. And also, like top-end 7 Series models in the past, it has a lot more than that. So today I'm going to show you around the M760, and I'm going to show you all of its cool features and interesting quirks. There are a lot of them. Then I'm going to get behind the wheel and see how it drives, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts, click the link below to visit autotrader.com oversteer. Now, this car has a lot of really cool features and quirks, but by far the coolest has to do with the key. Now, first off, take a look at the size of the key. It's only a little bit smaller than a cell phone, and the reason for that is the key for this car has a screen on it. I'm serious. And if you go through the little items on the screen, you can see a couple of different things. For example, you can see whether the car is locked, and you can see whether you've left the lights on. It'll also tell you if you're due for an oil change, it'll tell you how much range is left in your gas tank, which is a really great idea because maybe you don't want to turn on the car and see if you have to get gas. You just check your key and it tells you the range. The key also allows you to set a time to precondition the interior. Basically, you choose a time using the key to your car and it will start ventilating air throughout the interior before you get in, maybe to go to work in the morning. But none of that stuff is the craziest thing about the key. The craziest thing comes next. Now look at the key and you'll see the familiar buttons. Unlock the doors, the BMW logo is the lock button, open the trunk, and then there's a button marked P. So what exactly does P do? Well, this is pretty much the craziest feature in the car industry right now. If you hold down P, it gives you the option to start the engine. So then you press engine start, and now the car has started. You can hear it. Okay, so you can start the engine with the key. That's nothing. A lot of cars can do that, but not a lot of cars can do this. You then press the little arrows that come up, and watch this. The car moves itself up. No one's in the car. It moves itself forward out of the parking spot that it was just in. Now check this out. You want to stop it? You want to go the other direction? The car moves itself right back again. That has got to be one of the coolest things. Now you're thinking, this is stupid. Why would anyone want to do this? Well, the theory is if you live in some tight building, you're in New York City or Hong Kong or Singapore, and you don't want to go to the trouble of trying to squeeze into the side of your car every morning when you're getting in, you just start it up with the key, and then you use the key to basically walk your car like you're walking your pet. <laughs> Now, using that parking key system, you're not able to actually turn the wheels. You can only move it out of a tight parking spot to get in. You can't have everything, although you can have a lot. Another interesting item in this car when you get inside is called gesture control. You tired of using buttons? Aren't you tired of pressing stuff? Well, in this car, you don't have to press everything. You're driving down the road, you want to turn up the volume, just do this and the volume goes up. You can watch it happen. You're driving down the road, you get a call, you don't want to answer it, just do this, and the call goes away. The car has these sensors sort of in this region right in here, and it can tell what your gestures are, 
and then it responds in kind. Now, obviously you can't do this for everything. It's limited to only a few functions. There's even one customizable gesture. You point two fingers at the infotainment system and sort of go like that. And you can set it to a myriad of different controls if there's something that you use frequently that you don't want to adjust using a simple old school button. But if you think gesture control is cool, take a look at the camera system. Now, in every other luxury car, you put it in reverse, you get a backup camera and maybe a top-down 360 camera, and that's pretty cool. This car takes things to the next level. When the 360 camera is up, you tap the screen, and then look at this angle. It's showing the car from outside as if there's a camera like following you around. Then you can use the gesture control system to move that camera around like you're getting a 360 degree view on the outside of the car. It does this by stitching all sorts of different camera angles together from various cameras on the outside of the car and it shows a legitimately good picture of what is outside the car including the car in it. It's like a video game display, except it's real life. I've never seen anything like this in any other car. This is the future of automotive cameras. There are, of course, a couple of other interesting things in the cameras. When you're parked, the camera system actually displays where your doors will open. So if you're worried that your door is going to hit something, the camera system will show you. That 360 degree angle on the outside of the camera also shows green, yellow, red on how close you are to something. But despite all of that, my personal favorite camera item is still yet to come, and that would be car wash mode. You can select a mode inside the infotainment system to show you basically where your front wheels are in case you want to take your $180,000 M760 into one of those automatic car washes so you can line it up perfectly with the track and then you can get in the car wash. This is the craziest camera system I've ever seen in any car. Now for the next crazy feature of this car we move on to the rear seat. Now you look at the rear seat and you think it's a pretty standard rear seat, right? Eh, not quite. You drop this thing and out folds the most complicated and crazy rear seat controls I have ever seen in my entire life. We'll start in the middle. There's a tablet in here, and it's not just a screen. I mean, it's a tablet. Push eject, and a little mechanism raises the tablet forward so that you can take it out. And once you take it out, well, first off, the little plastic piece for that mechanism that raised it up, it, it lowers right back into its home. But beyond that, you can then control basically everything in this car from this tablet. My favorite tablet feature comes under the sun protection icon, and that's where you can control all the things that protect you from the sun. For example, push a little button on the side, on the window, and it automatically closes the sunshades on the window. Or you can press close all, and all of the sunshades close on both the doors, and the rear sunshade closes as well, instantaneously, in order to provide you the most sun protection possible. Now, Here's the crazy thing about this. There are physical buttons on the doors themselves that do this. You push a little button on the door, the sunshade closes, or you can just use your tablet. And with that in mind, we move on to the rear climate controls. You can use the tablet to control the climate controls. You can change the air temperature, you can change the amount of air where it's coming out, or you can just use the physical buttons in the rear seat to do the exact same thing. Are you noticing a pattern here? Let's move on to the seats, maybe the craziest thing. If you want, you can use the tablet to move the seats. Look at this, you go into the seats and then you just swipe your finger on the backrest of the seat and the backrest moves forward. You swipe your finger on the bottom and the bottom moves forward or you can just press the physical controls right next to where the tablet comes out of and it does the exact same thing. But why would you want to press physical controls and, and reach your hand all the way up there when you can use the tablet? Of course, the tablet also turns on heated and ventilated seats, and it isn't just heat or cool. You can also choose exactly which seat you're heating or cooling, how much, and where. There's also a massage function where you could program the seat to choose between varying intensities of massage in four different parts of the body. Also hilarious is the memory settings, which even allow you to control your favorite position of the front passenger seat, even though you're the rear passenger. But that stuff in the tablet is child's play compared to the other things it can do. Take a look at this. You see these two screens behind the front seats? Yet yeah, they're not for watching movies. You can use the tablet to control the navigation map which appears on those screens. Those screens aren't touchscreen, but you can use the tablet to move your finger around like a phone and then click on stuff and it will click 
on those screens as if you're actually touching them. Basically, you could even use the tablet sitting in this seat to control the screen in that seat and vice versa and we aren't done yet. How about Vitality Mode? The BMW Vitality program is maybe the craziest luxury car feature in existence. It's designed to give you an exercise on long drives and keep you loose. In fact, read this screen. It starts by saying the Vitality program invigorates your body and later says you can win three stars by keeping the bar within the target area. It's an exercise game you can play with your car while you're riding in the back seat. The way it works is the seat pushes on your muscles and you're supposed to push back which is designed to help keep you fit and allow you to have a workout on long car rides i'm serious but who needs vitality mode when you can control the fragrance yes that's right your bmw m760 can give off a fragrance and using your tablet back here you can choose which one. There is blue suite number one, described as waft of pure water pearls, or golden suite number two, described as dusk of shimmering desert. And when you select a fragrance, it will sort of blow that fragrance through the climate vents to add a scent to your M760 while you're chauffeured along in the back seat. And check this out, you can even adjust the level of fragrance. Do you want more dusk of shimmering desert? Just, that's fine, turn it up. Up. Do you want less dusk of shimmering desert? No problem. Turn it down and then the dusk is eliminated just a little bit. Now, if you're a rear seat passenger, you also have the ability to change the lighting. And I'm not just talking about turning on and off your map light or your interior dome light. I mean, you can use your little tablet to change the lighting colors for the entire car. You want blue and white, you want blue and blue, green and white, green and green, purple, white whatever you want you can change it back here and then the entire interior lighting colors change and you can change the brightness if you want those lights completely off you can do it if you want them just faintly on you can do that too and you can do that from your tablet you also have the ability from your tablet to turn on sort of this mood light that's inside the door there's no switch on the door itself to turn on this light you just turn it on from your tablet and then it goes from like sort of dim to like a little less dim now, aside from all the crazy quirks of that tablet, I'm already in the back seat, so I might as well discuss a couple of other interesting rear seat features, starting with the rear headrests. Now, these aren't just standard headrests. They're very soft, but they also can be adjusted to contour around the back of your head. So if you want to sleep, you can just sort of turn them so they fit the back of your head, and then you can sleep, sort of like the headrests on an airplane. Another cool feature in the rear seat would be the panoramic sky lounge which of course is a feature this car has basically what it is is a thousand leds inside the sunroof the front and rear panoramic sunroof and when you're driving at night you open the sunroof they light up to give you the panoramic sky lounge and you can change the color of those leds so if you want your sky lounge to show purple well you can do it when you look up you see purple stars in the ceiling of your BMW. Next up, moving on to the outside of the car and the trunk. Now, the trunk isn't particularly unusual. It's large, but of course it is. This is a large car. There are a couple of interesting quirks in the trunk, however, one of which is if you look at the very base of the rear window, and you look very closely there, you will see it isn't just some plastic trim piece. Instead, it's lined in this little velvet material. That's to prevent trunk rattling, to make the car just a little bit quieter that's the kind of thing you get when you spend hundred and eighty thousand dollars on a luxury sedan that is impressive attention to detail something else when you get when you spend this money on a luxury sedan take a look inside that bag in the trunk and you will find pillows these aren't just any pillows rather they have little snaps and they clip on to those rear headrests i showed you before you can clip them on and then you can enhance the comfort of your rear seating experience while you're sitting there changing the interior color on your tablet tablet. Next up, moving up to the front of the M760, take a close look up here and you can see that the grill is closed. Now, that's because BMW keeps the grill of this car closed in normal situations to improve aerodynamics and thus gas mileage. However, if the car needs extra air, like if it's idling for a while or if you floor it and it needs to suck in a lot of air for the engine, the grill can open automatically to give the engine the air that it needs. And then when it doesn't need the air again, it can close right back up again. And next up, we move on to the badge there on the C pillar. Now, there are only a few ways you can tell apart the regular 7 Series and the M760, but my favorite way is that badge. It just sort of subtly says V12. It might as well say 
I'm richer than you. Another interesting badge on the outside of the car is right here. It's only visible when the doors are open. Otherwise, it's hidden on the B-pillar underneath the doors. It says on it, carbon core. Basically, what that means is that the chassis of this car has some carbon infused in it to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit tighter. Of course, no one who has one of these has any idea what that means, carbon core. I, the salesperson at the BMW dealership probably tells it to them, and then they forget in the following week. Nonetheless, the badge is there, and this is something that BMW is proud of. Next up, moving on to the side of the car, check this out. When you approach the car at night, it gives you these pathway lights that come out from the bottom of the car. They're sort of flowy and cool. And speaking of those little lines that light up on the pavement as you approach your 7 Series at night, that exact same line design is carried over to the interior dome lights on the ceiling of the 760 next to the rear view mirror to give it sort of a more luxurious look than your typical automotive interior dome light. A couple of other interesting interior quirks in here that I like, one of which is the climate controls, which look like they have regular buttons to increase the airflow or turn on the heated and cooled seats, but actually that's a screen. It's just designed to resemble buttons. You press it and then it does exactly what it shows it will do, but it isn't a button. In fact, it is a screen. And one of the items on that screen is the little perfume canister, just like in the rear tablet. You press that and you can increase or decrease the level of fragrance inside your M760. Maybe more interesting than that, look a little bit higher and you can see the little climate control temperature adjusters that can bring the center vents from cool to warm. In every other car, these would be manual sliders. You just sort of slide your finger over and turn a little plastic lever. But in this car, it's electronic. So you push exactly your desired level of cool or warm. And then a little white light lights up exactly where you want your cool or warm setting to be. Moving on to the gauge cluster, there are a couple of interesting things in the gauge cluster. One item I absolutely love, right next to the little fuel gauge that shows how much fuel you have left, it shows your range. That doesn't go away. It's not configurable or changeable, but it's always there, which is a really good idea. I generally don't really want to know how much fuel I have left. I want to know how far I can go. And this car just sort of keeps that there all the time so that you'll always know, in addition to knowing your fuel level. Another thing I like the gauge cluster is that when you're revving the engine or going through the RPMs, as the tachometer needle increases and goes to each additional RPM, that number lights up in larger print as it's reached by the needle, as if to say, you're at 3,000, you're at 4,000. And then as you go past it, that number sort of goes back down, sits quietly until it is needed again. A couple of other interesting quirks in the infotainment system. You can use the infotainment system to turn on and off your daytime running lights. And when you do that, the daytime running lights on the little M760i graphic also turn on and off to mimic what's happening on the outside of the car, which is cool. I also like the control for the preconditioned comfort ventilation, which I showed you before using the key. You can also configure it in the infotainment system. Basically, you can set a time when the car starts circulating air inside the cabin so it's nice and fresh when you arrive to drive it to work in the morning. Next up, the M760, of course, has a wireless charging tray. That's no surprise. Most luxury cars have that now. Basically, you just put your phone on a little tray and it will charge the phone without you having to plug in a cord. Not that unusual. The cool thing in this car, it has a little reminder. So if you leave your phone in that tray, it will remind you before you get out and walk away that your phone has been left behind. Sort of like a reminder if you left on your lights or if you left your key in the car. Another cool infotainment system quirk, you can ask the car to measure the engine oil level, which is a fun little thing to watch. You ask it to do the measurement and then it sort of loads on a percentage basis, measuring the level. And then eventually it tells you that the engine oil level is just fine. Another item I love inside the infotainment system would be the owner's manual, which is absolutely hilarious. You can use the owner's manual to find out various things about your car, but you can also use it to get various animated displays showing your car doing all sorts of things. Take a look at one of them. Sensors monitor the area around the vehicle and identify clearance suitable for evasion. A camera close to the interior mirror monitors the area in front of the vehicle. One thing I like about those animated displays is the other vehicles included in them, like if it's showing you parking or some forward collision warning, they're always BMWs. There's like i8s and X5s in every single parking lot your M760i happens to encounter. Also another infotainment system quirk, this car gives you the ability to record voice memos. So if you're driving along and you want to tell yourself something for later, you can do that. No one will ever use this feature. No one has ever used this feature, but some German guy in the development of this car is like, I want voice memos. And so, well, 
they all have them. And finally, one cool quirk of the navigation system I found is how it displays buildings. A lot of navigation systems show 3D buildings, but this thing takes it a step further. This is a 7 Series I was driving in San Diego. This is the famous Hotel Del Coronado. If you look at the navigation system in the 7 Series, it actually shows the famous red roofs of that building from above, more than just your typical 3D image of the building. That is a cool little touch. A lot of people won't notice it, but when you do, it's a nice little Easter egg. Now, moving back to the rest of the interior. Another interesting item I find in the center console is the V12 badge. This car reminds you that you didn't cheap out and get a 740 or even a 750. You got the V12. And anytime you want that confirmation, just look down at your center console and it'll let you know. One other interesting feature in this car is the dead pedal, which allows you to rest your left foot to the left of the brake pedal in the driver's foot. Well, take a look at this thing. It's like the most advanced dead pedal I've ever seen. Not only does it have the M logo on it, which no one will ever notice, but there's like a little pattern on it, like an expensive sneaker, just so your left foot has an appropriately nice spot to sit as you drive your M760 down the road. And speaking of appropriately nice, I wanna draw your attention to the interior in general in this car. Not only is everything really high quality, but everything feels good. Everything is nice to touch, nice to look at. And look at these seats and these like little white cords in the seats. Everything is just, it looks so expensive. And of course, that's because it is. One more item, despite all these luxuries, this is still a sort of M car with a nice big engine and it sounds decent. Take a listen. And so those are all the cool features and interesting quirks of the M760. I told you there'd be a lot. Now it's time to get behind the wheel and drive the ultimate BMW. Driving the M760. It's just so smooth. Starting off and idling forward, you don't hear any engine noise. The ride quality is so, so smooth. I've just put it in sport mode and instantly you hear this like mean exhaust, even though I'm driving this, this luxurious BMW. But at the end of the day, it's still a BMW and it's still a V12. One thing I like, the uh, turn signal has gone back to normal in this car. You put it down, it stays down. This is how a turn signal should be. BMW's gotten rid of those stupid old turn signals. It's perfect again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually kind of interesting because it's such a big car and yet because you know it has because of this giant engine and I'm in sport mode so the throttle response is tightened up because of all that it's sort of able to feel a little bit more pokey than you'd kind of expect from a full-size uh, car like this. All right. <laughs> wow. Oh. Man, this thing is so quick. It also feels just really, really stable. Of course, the steering is very light. I mean, it doesn't feel like a sports car, but the whole point of this thing is that it's a, it's a luxury sedan. Um, if we get into sport mode, you can tell that they've tightened up the steering a little bit, but it still has sort of that vague luxury sedan feel. BMW makes a zillion other cars for people who really want, you know, the sort of darty little steering feel that you'd get from an actual sports car. This is good for a luxury sedan, of course. I don't think it's quite on Panamera level, but... <laughs> wow, it is quick, quick, quick. It actually feels kind of like you can zoink around and do your own thing and move into lanes and whatever, which is surprising because it's just massive, but it's got a ton of power and BMW has created a situation where you can actually enjoy the power uh, and use it pretty easily. This isn't like one of those S-classes where the power is sort of something that, that comes on eventually. This car kind of, it, it's almost like a, it has almost like sports car power delivery. Oh man, the seats are so comfortable. Oh, the, the headrest is just especially comfortable. It's like a pillow. It's interesting because I just did a video with the Genesis G90, the new full-size, you know, Genesis luxury sedan, which is a deal at 70 whatever thousand dollars. And this car is double the price of that, but you can kind of tell why. I mean, everything is just enhanced. Everything is sort of on the next level. And that's a very good car. And a lot of people don't want to spend $180,000 for a luxury car. But if you do, you want the stuff that is commensurate with spending $180,000. And this is that. We're just like in a serene bubble away from the world. I don't have to think about anybody out there in their cheap cars. And the transmission, although the transmission is pretty tight in sport mode and the throttle response is pretty good, etc. In comfort mode, it's just, it's dulled almost to the point where you don't really feel any shifts. I could just take this thing on a long trip across the country and just live like this. Literally just, and when someone cuts me off, I'd be like, eh, I don't really care. 
And so that's the M760i, the ultimate BMW, the most expensive BMW ever made. The luxury car world continues to get crazier and more advanced and more luxurious, and this is the new king, the $180,000 king. And now it's time to give it a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the M760i is fine, not especially amazing, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration, however, is amazing. It does 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds, which makes it faster than a BMW M4, and it gets an incredible 8 out of 10, scoring better than some serious sports cars I've tested, like the Audi R8 and the Mercedes CLK 63 Black Series. Handling is good, but steering is a bit light, and ultimately it's a big car, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor is a bit above average, but most people won't pay any more attention than a regular 7 Series, so it gets a 6 out of 10. As for importance, the top end 7 Series models never sell incredibly well, and they aren't exactly museum worthy, giving it a 5 out of 10. Add it up, and the total weekend score is 31 out of 50, which ties the Porsche Panamera Turbo. In fact, they got the same score in every category. And so on to the daily categories, starting with features. I've only done it once before, but between the parking thing, the camera thing, the rear tablet, and the Vitality program. I can't avoid it. This car gets a 10 out of 10. Comfort is truly impressive. Not quite reaching the upper echelon Rolls-Royce models, but it's not far off and it gets a 9 out of 10. Quality is tremendously good. The interior is fantastic, and my only worry would be long-term ownership of that big V12. It gets an 8 out of 10. Practicality is good, typical of a full-size luxury sedan, and it gets a 6 out of 10. As for value, it's pretty pricey and it'll lose value quickly, which means it should get a low score, but if you want the best, the the newest, the coolest, and many people looking to spend this money on a car do want exactly that, good luck finding anything more advanced. So it gets a 6 out of 10, bringing the total daily score to 39 out of 50. That makes it the best daily car I've ever tested, falling just shy of the Lincoln Navigator SUV and the Honda Odyssey Elite minivan for daily duty. Add it all up and the Doug score is 70 out of 100. This car truly has it all. It's fast, it handles reasonably well, it has more technology than you can imagine, and it can carry the whole family. Here it is compared to rivals. It beats out the Panamera Turbo by one point thanks to a better daily score. It's more comfortable and it has more stuff, though the Panamera's resale value will be higher. It also beats out the Rolls-Royce Wraith and the Lexus LC as its four-door sedan body makes it more usable and it destroys the Genesis G90. No surprise, of course, given the huge price difference. Hello, 760. <laughs>